Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today I'm going to show you how I turn scraps like these into awesome end grain cutting boards like these. So let's get started. The first thing I do is collect all the scraps and cutoffs from around my shop and group them by length. This is actually only about half the scraps that I'm going to be using for this batch. I have a lot of these cutoffs for removing a live edge from a board. I'll remove what I can from each of them. I'll continue going through my scrap pile and organizing groups into blanks. Next I'll clean up two faces with the planer and then I can glue up the strips into blanks. Once the glue is dry, I'll trim the excess off the ends to make them easier to work with. Next I'll run all the blanks over the joinder to clean up and flatten one face. I can then send them all through the planer to clean up the opposite face. You can see all the blanks I have waiting to be planed sitting on my workbench. After planing, I'll run the blanks through my drum sander to remove any tear out or snipe from the planer. This helps to get a nice tight glue joint later. At the table saw, I'll trim them all to the same width. And now I can start cross cutting the blanks. I'm cutting these to 1 and 3 quarter inches wide, which after surfacing should leave me with a cutting board that is around 1 and 5 eighths inches thick. Here are some of the blanks cut up, probably about half of them. And you can see there's some more blanks sitting behind my bench waiting to be processed. Now here's the fun part. I'll grab a few pieces of different blanks and lay them out in a pattern for a cutting board. Once I have a pattern that I like, I can start gluing them up. A couple pieces of square stock act as calls to evenly distribute the clamping pressure. Once the glue is dry, I check over each board for defects and fill in any voids with epoxy. Now it's time to flatten. I use my router sled and a large straight bit to flatten the boards. The one downside to this method though is that it's extremely messy. Even with two vacuums going, dust is still thrown everywhere. After the flattening, I'll give the boards a few passes through the drum sander and that'll give me a head start on sanding. I'll then clean up the sides on the table saw. Now it's time to make the finger holds. I'll mark the center of the side of the board and make a mark 2 inches in each direction, giving me a 4 inch long finger hold. I also marked the center line for aligning my router bit. I'm using a 3 quarter inch round nose bit for this. And I'm making the finger holds 3 eighths of an inch deep. I'll make these cuts in two passes. I'll do one pass taking off a quarter inch of material and the other taking off 1 eighth of an inch of material. Now it's time to start sanding. I start out with 80 grit and then move to 120 grit. Before I move to my final grit, I'll run an edge profile on all the edges. Lately I've been using a chamfer bit, but I've also done a round over in the past as well as just breaking the edges. Now I can sand the whole thing with 180 grit. I use a sander to clean up the chamfers and to break the edges of the chamfers to make sort of a chamfer round over hybrid. The last bit of sanding is to break the edges around the finger holes and to remove any burning from the routing. A carving gouge makes cleaning up any burn marks really quick. And now for the last detail before finishing.
For the finish, I'm using General Finish's Salad Bowl Finish. I apply this very heavily, allowing the end greens to soak it in. The green will continue pulling in the finish, and I'll keep putting more on. After a while the absorption slows down and I'll flip the board over and do the same thing to the other side. Many times you'll see some wet spots on the other side indicating that the finish has traveled all the way through the board. So again I'll do the same thing to the other side and I'll keep adding finish until the absorption slows down. And just to give you an idea of how much finish actually goes into one of these, for the four that I'm finishing in this shot I use about half a can. I'll leave the board secure for about two days and then apply a lighter coat of finish. This helps to even out the look since the different species of wood absorb the finish at a different rate. A few days later, I'll sand down the boards with 600 grit paper to make them really smooth. And that's it! We made a cutting board! A thousand steps later! <laughs> so for this batch, I was able to make 27 cutting boards. I made 23 of this size, 12 by 16 and I made four of this size, which is a 10 by 12. Now the awesome thing about this technique is that you can use any scraps you want as long as they are long enough to go through your machines, which in my case is eight inches. So I can use even those little tiny scraps to make actual cutting boards out of them. Another really awesome thing about this is that no two boards are gonna be exactly the same because you're pulling in scraps from all different projects and all different lengths and all different sizes and everything. They're gonna be all different which is really awesome. It gives a really nice random look to the board. Now the really, really awesome part about this, and that's the part that I like the most, is that these boards are made of all the past projects that I made. So for instance, in this board here, the maple came from when I made my workbench, and the walnut came from the coffee table I made this summer. So I tell a little more of a story, which is always a fun thing to share. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got some ideas on how to get out in your shop, maybe clean up and get rid of some scrap lumber without throwing it in the burn pile. <laughs> so if you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.